right, hey everybody, Brian here once again, and welcome to this uh, second video here with Ted Thomas talking about tax certificates and uh, tax liens. Um, this is a phenomenal strategy. So if you haven't watched the first video, I recommend go find that first email, watch that first one. It's gonna dovetail into this one perfectly. So Ted, uh, thank you once again for taking the time to go through this again with our members here. And if you, know, if you guys saw the first video, everybody, you know that I'm traveling in a motorhome, so hopefully my internet uh, is stable for this call, uh, for this this video here. But let's continue with the, the discussion here, Ted, about what we talked about in the last video with, with tax certificates. Um, so one thing that um, I, I've had some members ask me about that have heard about the strategy is saying, well, hey, I'm in Canada, I'm in Australia, I'm in the UK, and they don't really like to invest in their local markets because the it's not as good of a return, uh, there's different regulations, et cetera. And so a lot of them are looking at the U.S. as where they want to invest, especially for real estate. So when it comes to this strategy, um, can people that are outside of the country invest here in the U.S.? And you know, do they have to like see the properties, that kind of stuff? Because obviously, if they're in the U.K., they can't just fly over here, look at a property, buy it on the auction block, right? So how's that work if you're out of the country? All right. Well, why don't I start in the east and work my way to the west? So I'll start in the U.K. So there are lots of people in the U.K. that do this. Uh, almost all the provinces of Canada. Uh, Mexico City. And if you want to go to, towards the West, we have people in Singapore, we have them in Bangkok, and we have them, of course, in Australia. Now, they all can invest here. So understand if you want to buy in the United States, you can. The only restriction you're going to have is you have to use USD, and you all know what USD means. Uh, all right, so you need to use US dollars, and everything's done in English in the States. So you guys should just get prepared for that. So other than that, this is a great business for you, and I'm going to I'm going to first explain it, and then when I finish that, I'm going to actually show you a couple of videos. I'll show you some people from buying from their kitchen table in like Colonia, British Columbia, or I'll show you from, from different parts of the world, and you'll get to see that. All right, so here's how it works. So across the United States, all of the states have counties. So there's about 3,000 counties, half of the counties. So there's a lot. That's what I'm explaining. There's a lot of counties where the property hasn't been, the taxes haven't been paid. So what the local government will do is they'll issue multiple notices of default. Now, when the notice of default is, is given, they have told the person you have to pay the tax on a certain date. If the tax is unpaid, the long arm of the government will move in and it'll just confiscate the property. They'll just take the property away. They'll evict the tenant or the owner that was there. Then they will sell the property and the starting bid will be very close to the back taxes. Remember, the government only wants tax. They don't want that property. So they confiscate it, and now they're going to sell it at very close to back tax. Now, are you going to get a property for five cents on the dollar? Probably not. I'll show you people later that, de that did. But basically, these, these properties, anybody can go and bid on them. And I'm going to just show you a couple of lists right now. So watch my kid. Just watch. I'm going to switch cameras. And I won't move it around this time. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a list of these properties. So I picked a community that had a lot of properties for sale, but if you're in the if you're in the British Isles and you wanted to buy one of these, you could do it right now. So what I'm putting under the camera now is a tax defaulted property sale. And look what county it is. It's for Los Angeles County, Los Angeles, California. All right. Now, if you don't think there's a lot of these, look at the thickness of this book. Holy Toledo. Now watch what I'm going to do. Each, each page has three to six properties on it. There's over 200 pages in this book. All of these properties are going to be sold. I could do this for a long time. <laughs> this is amazing. All right. This is just one county in this 3,000 counties in the United States. Now, I can do the same thing for Houston. I can do the same thing for Dallas. I can do the same thing for Atlanta, Georgia. You're kind of getting the I can do it for Miami, Florida. And so the point is, I just wanted to see this. So you can see right on the bottom. Okay. Now, that auction was last year. Now, I don't know when this year's coming up. So you get the yeah, Los Angeles County. All right. That's the tax collector's list for their tax defaulted property auction. All right, so if you're living in a foreign country, I'm actually gonna show you videos of people from different parts, whether it's provinces of Canada, whatever, that are buying properties online and they're doing everything online. So the tax collectors here all speak English. Uh, there are gonna be actual auctions that you can go to and we can teach you how to do everything online. Everything I'll show you today will be people online. So I'll show you at least two other videos I'll attach to this one, Brian, and we'll show them actually doing all that step-by-step -step process so people can see it. So I, I hope awesome. I thoroughly answered that. You know, you're so knowledgeable yeah. about this. You asked me great questions. Everybody else just kind of uh, goes over it, but that's a, that was a great question.
My name is Joe Ricards. I live in Kelowna, BC. I do creative real estate in Canada. I've been doing that for 20 years. Uh, I've purchased about $200,000 worth of other real estate courses over the span of about seven to 10 years, looking for the next best, next big thing in real estate investing, looking for something better than I was doing in Canada. Well, TEDS is one of the only systems I would say, as, especially as a Canadian, that he was very upfront that, okay, if you're gonna do this, you're gonna to need to do it down in the States, as opposed to the US gurus coming up to Canada and saying, oh yeah, this works up here too. Uh, I found that not to be the case. So it was refreshing to, uh, to know that what I'm getting is what I'm getting with TED. From TED's course, then I participated uh, in the uh, Pinellas County auction online and bought a property at my second auction in Clearwater Beach in actually a, a, an area called uh, Island Estates, which is a very prestigious area. And uh, net net, uh, it's about a 40, 40K profit flip. So that was my first deal. One of the things I know that people do get confused about that I want to make sure that we clarify is that there are different states. The, or, or the states are different as far, as far as what options they might have. Um, because everybody thinks, oh, I'm going to go to my state and buy some tax certificates. Well, that's not always the case. So can you explain the kind of the two different scenarios that a state might have Absolutely. when it comes to this strategy? Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to just take this picture away. And you're going to see another picture come up. Okay. So first I'm going to explain the difference between tax liens and tax deed. A tax lien is issued by a state that's very benevolent. The state's very nice. They don't throw the people out. The people stay in the property. You're just buying an investment. You're not getting a property but you're buying the taxes. And when the people come in and pay their tax, which 97% will, when they come in and pay, you're gonna get your money back. So you're gonna get a certificate and you're gonna invest with the government and you're gonna get a check back from the government. So that's just an investment. Now, I'm gonna show you a list of those first. Now I'm gonna come back and do both, don't worry. So this is a list and let me see. This one is Fort Lauderdale, Florida, okay? And this is a list of tax lien certificates, which there'll be a lot of. So I'm going to the back of the list right now. You can see me shuffling around. You can see how thick the list is. There's hundreds of pages here. There's, oh, no, there's not. There's 160 pages in this list, right by my thumbnail. You see that? Now, there's no pictures in here. This is just a list of tax liens. Okay, now let me show you how big the list is. This is one page. This is just one page. Now, Ted, a question that people, when they're, when they're looking at these, the question a lot of people are going to have is, well, how do I choose which one I do I want to want to buy? Well, that's why you come to class. We teach you how to do it. <laughs> yep, there you go. Okay, now let me simplify it without being a wise guy. I was just being a wise guy. Folks, every property is researchable from your desktop because every property has a number in the United States. Just like you have a social number, it has a number. If you know that number, all you can do is go click, click, click at that county and you'll actually see the property, every single one. Okay, now those are tax liens. So what have I showed you so far? I've shown you tax liens. All right, now this is Los Angeles. I showed you that a little bit ago. All right, this is Los Angeles. These are tax deeds. Okay, they're gonna sell the actual property. So the first one, there was, there was 30,000 on this list, 30,000. This list has 2,000 actual properties. So let's say, let's say you're in Canada and you wanna buy in New York. So we're going to New York now. And so here's the county we're going to. Sullivan County, New York, and it's going to show me all the properties that are in here. This this one has about 200 properties. Show us the auction date. There's how many properties they're going to sell. Now, there's not as many properties as there will be tax liens. All right. They show me a picture of every property. Every property's got a picture, and it's got an address, and it's got an amount on it. So every one of those properties will be sold. Now, before, you know, you've seen this presentation before. I couldn't show you all this, but now I put a camera on my desk so you guys can see it. So every one of the and this is not so that's Sullivan County. Here's another county. So New York has, uh, I believe, about 67 counties. This auction has got 86 properties, and there's pictures of every one of them in here, every single one. So no, they're not. They're, it's all transparent. Here's one with uh, no, it's the same county. Uh, here's Dutchess County. That's right outside of New York City. 113 properties. Look at the pictures. Look at those. Some of those are pretty nice properties. Yeah. And so, right, so you're, this, this is incredible. I mean, there's, there, there's so many properties out there that are available. I mean, it's amazing. Well, just, just in New York this year, there'll be over 2,000 properties. Look, that's just two, that's about three or four of the, of the counties in New York. There's 60, there's 60 or 70 counties there. 
Every right. it would be a stack. It'd be a stack this big. This big would be the stack, just for New right. York. Yeah. Okay. Now th and, this, and so this one's what, just tax liens. Just tax liens. Okay, yeah, back, okay. back to me, Lance. Okay, so so one thing I think it can help people really clarify this in their mind a little bit is when it comes to the title of a property. Because you, if you've ever bought a property, there's a title, right? The title is it, it, you know shows who's the owner of it. And when you go and buy a property, you go get a mortgage, you buy from a real estate agent, you get the title. Title's in your name. Now it might be held in escrow with the bank because there's a mortgage, but you're on title. And so, what what happens to the title in a tax deed state versus a tax lien state? What what happens to the title when you actually good? Invest in, that property. in a tax lien state, which there'll be thousands of these tax liens, thousands, thousands upon thousands of them, the tax lien uh, is on the property, but the title stays with the owner. The owner does not lose the title because all they have to do, they will lose the title if they don't pay the tax. If they don't pay the tax, you'll get the property and the title. But 97% of them are going to pay. Almost everybody I know gets paid on their taxes. So the investor, no matter where they are in the world, we can teach them to do both because we do everything online now. Now, five so what years happens ago- to, we, right, What happens to the title on a tax deed state? On a tax deed, what happens to the title in that scenario? You get the title immediately, right at the auction. Right. Okay, so that's where I want to make sure people that are watching this video understand the difference um, is that you, when it comes to a tax deed, you're going to be more hands-on. You're going to be more involved because you're actually getting the, the tax deed – or sorry, the title. You are the owner of the property, and then now you are going to turn around and do something with the property, which we'll talk about that later on. But I want to make sure you understand that because if you want to be on the passive side of stuff, tax lien. And by the way, you just choose a state that's a tax lien, de, uh, lien state, and you invest there. It can be your state. If it's a tax lien state, it can be Florida. It can be whatever, right? But if you want to be more active – and in the property, more active investor, and maybe even buy and hold properties, tax deed state is where you want to go. And I, I will be, you know, I, I'm in a tax deed state, by the way. And it's easier if you want to acquire properties to be in the state because you can go to the auction, you can go there in person. So that's one of the things that I've experienced the difference between those two tax deed, you're going to be more hands on, you get the title. Obviously, there can be more upside that are potentially there because you're, you're going to manage the property, tax lien, more passive. So I would say if you're, Super conservative, you're a passive investor, you want to look at tax lien certificates, and there will be hundreds of thousands of them. For example, this is Tampa, Florida, there'll be 35,000. In Miami, there'll be 60,000 to choose from. However, if you wanted to buy property, this is New York, a brochure, and this little county had 86 properties of which you can see a picture of every one of them. So this is for entrepreneurs, and this is for the conservative ones. You get the idea? Yep. Does that help a little bit? All right. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not exactly 30 years old anymore. I'm not conservative. I am conservative, but I buy property because I want property because of the inflation hedge. So I will buy between now and Christmas, I will buy at least five more properties because I want the inflation hedge because I'm watching what you just said, Brian. We're, we're already at 5 or 6%. I, would, I went through the Jimmy Carter... It, it, era where we borrowed money at 18%. We borrowed from the bank at 18%. And the inflation was anywhere from 20 to 22. Wow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> of, very different times for sure. Um, yeah. So actually, here's, a, here's, a, here's a, um, a question. Like when it comes to the tax liens, I mean, th is there a maximum number that you can actually buy? Or, or is there any limit to what you can actually buy? Oh, there's, there's no limit. I mean, you go to a place like Miami, They'll have 60,000 tax certificates available at the auction. The biggest one I've ever seen is Cook County in Chicago, where there's 100,000 certificates. And before the computer, they had to get up with a little uh, three by five card and they had to read the number of the property and then auction it. <laughs> it took 35 days to have the auction. That's how many there were. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, if there's that many out there and, the, and you can get those kinds of returns, who, who are the people that are actually buying the tax certificates? Who's like the main people that are actually buying them? Is it just individuals or is there institutions that also buy them? Okay, now, now uh, we've, uh, the biggest competitor in the past was always the banks. The banks would come in, they would not buy properties. They're not allowed, they're, they're prevented from buying right. property. Uh, but they do uh, buy tax liens. So they would come and bid at the auction. Because if an auction is paying, like in Florida, 18%, I mean, they could think of, think of the bank. The bank's got 1% or 2% money, 
and they're getting 18% of it. They're happy to, they're happy to do that. Now the hedge funds, uh, they're, they're trying it, but the hedge funds get in trouble because they have to buy big volume. And so they'll right. try and buy a big block of tax liens. Well, a, a negative on the business from a hedge fund standpoint, the positive for us is the real estate business is an entrepreneurial business. It's not one that you can codify like you could a, a stocks. And so uh, the systems don't work well if you're not an entrepreneur. So entrepreneurs do very well with this. So you answer your question, hedge funds come in, but unfortunately they have to buy a whole block. Like they'll buy, they'll try to buy uh, 50, 75, or even a thousand at a time. Well, you know, there's gonna be some in there that are no good. I mean, every property that right. comes up for auction is not a, a gem. The gems, you know, we buy those, we, we don't want to. Buy. And sometimes, uh, for, for example, I've seen them buy in Florida under Lake Okeechobee, it's all plotted. And they buy those plots and it's underwater. Right. So you don't want to That's do crazy. that. You, you, right. yeah, actually, you know the rule of real estate. You don't buy anything that you didn't have boots on the ground. Or someone's yeah. boots yep. that you knew. Yeah. Cool. Um, so. And then also another question is that when it comes to the, the, the liens, tax liens, not really the um, properties, when we're the tax liens is should you buy large ones, small ones? Does it doesn't really matter? How's that look? Well, I tell people to, to, to buy a lot of small ones so that they're okay. getting continuous returns because they all don't pay off at the same time. So let's say the investor's got a hundred thousand in a, in a IRA or something like that. I tell them to go down and register it, register the IRA as the buyer. All right. So all money comes back into the IRA. So they're protecting right. themselves on taxes. Now, if they've done that, then what happens every time one pays off, it'll go right to the IRA and they can go back and buy another one. I mean, they're not restricted to just going to the very auctions because once you learn how to do it, we can teach you how to do it electronically after the auction. So we can do both. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, and another question I, that uh, I've, I asked, you know, had when I first got into this and I know a lot of our members probably have right now is, is that we're hearing the returns on a tax lien is double digit returns, which is incredible. I mean, where are you getting double digit returns safely in the traditional investment world, which I'm talking about, you know, go to school, get a job, 401k and retire. You're not getting double-digit returns very often in those kinds of in, in, in those kinds of vehicles, so you can get that with these though. So why aren't more people doing these? Why aren't more people investing in tax liens, and getting double-digit returns? They're getting six percent in the stock market in their four hundred one k, and they're barely surviving, and they're not even building any real wealth. Yet you can get twenty percent returns in a tax lien, and you can put your money there. And good lord, it's 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 insane. It's crazy. All right, so here's something that's probably surprised you. If I held up a tax lien list, which I'm reaching for one right now, if I held up this list and said, this is Fort Lauderdale, and this is a list of tax lien certificates, and within this list, there's 38,000 certificates. Okay, how many people in the world ever think have even seen that newspaper? Very few have done. Because the county makes a huge mistake. And the mistake is, they are a county. They're a separate entity within 3,000 other entities. They do not advertise outside the county. I'm probably the only guy in the world that has a, a list of every county in the United States. And when people come to my class, I give them an external drive that's that big with access to every county and every property in the United States. The rest of the people only know about their county. I'll give you another example right now. So nobody knows that Los Angeles County has all of those available right now. Because until I show it to you, like I'm doing now, how would they know? Because they don't even know that there's 3,000 counties. So the county only advertises within the county. And if they don't let the rest of the world know, so we have the advantage with our little external drive, we just go right, we can go to every single one of them. So this is an antiquated business that has been around for 200 years. And if you're asking the government to change, about the only change we can expect is to have them spend more money. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, so and honestly, Ted, you know, when I think about this, I, I think of like this certain group of people, this avatar, as I call it. It's that person that's either retired or at retirement um, or wants to retire. And they have typically, they have some funds. Maybe it's in a 401k, IRA, maybe some cash. It could even be elevation banking, which is life insurance, cash value, life insurance strategies. But they're sitting there thinking, I've got to get something else going because I cannot invest in the stock market and maybe get a 20% drop in my money next year when the market crashes. I can't survive that way. Or, you know, I, I can't risk going into cryptocurrencies because it's so volatile. I, I don't know that space. 
They need something that is consistent, that is double-digit returns, can allow them to build their wealth, but also create cash flow um, that they can take out eventually. And this strategy there can allow them to get you know, 10, 15, 20, even 30% return, depending on the state, on their, their money. And right. that's stable, right. and it's the government guaranteeing it. And so that, this to me, seems like a strategy that if you're at that place where you want to take some uh, your nest egg and you want to get it into some asset or a vehicle, it's going to give you double-digit returns pretty much guaranteed and grow that nest egg or create cash flow out of it. This seems like it's a really good fit. And it's unfortunate it sounds, to me that it sounds like a lot of people don't know about this because it could really help a lot of people that are in that kind of situation. Right, right. Well, I've been at it 25 years, and uh, uh, I noticed uh, uh, now that there's other people talking about it, but nobody – has made a big splash out of it. Now, there was times years ago when people put it on infomercials and things like that. The positive of that was a lot of people wanted to know about it, but they couldn't afford to do it. And so this is a business yeah. for investors. This isn't for, uh, you never hear me say there's nothing down that you're going to get rich next Friday. This is a business where you hit it right on the head. It's a stable business, and it's for people that want to do something again and again repetitiously. Now, the buying of property isn't so repetitious as we'd like it to be. But if you knew, if you knew every year that I could show you this many properties in Los Angeles that you could buy with starting bids of 10 to 20 cents on the dollar, would you be from California looking at Los Angeles? Well, of course you would. Well, there's, there's, there's another 58 counties in that state that we could be talking about. I came across Ted Thomas material sometime in July of last year, and it was just really good timing because we were just about at time looking for something with greater returns, uh, something that will give us more time to spend uh, with family and enjoy our family more while uh, you know being able to live the life we've always dreamed of. Because I attended Ted's three-day workshop, I knew that LA has a two-day auction. What happens is whatever they don't sell on the first day, they sell half price on the second day and that is how we ended up with our lot. Uh, we paid $14,000 uh, for a lot that was assessed I believe 210000 You more than doubled our money. Or right, it's the same situation we'll talk about it on our next video. I'm just I'm just showing you one brochure from New York. Now we just picked those. Now the, every other state has the same thing. So half of the states sell tax liens, half of them sell tax deeds. Now we probably have time. If you want, we'll do a, a couple of more of these if you want to do them. Yeah. And so one, one example, one thing I think it's really important to note is that you mentioned tax deed and tax lien. And so the difference once again is tax lien. It's an investment. You, you acquire it. You'll get paid a return on it. There you go. The tax deed is you acquire the title. So what I've seen a lot of people do is you can combine both the strategies. You don't have to do one or the other. You can do both. And so one example is doing the tax deed strategy where you acquire the property. Maybe you guy get a $100,000 property for $30,000 to $30,000 or $10,000 or $50,000. You turn around, you sell it for seventy five. dollars All of a sudden, you just turned $20,000 into potentially $50,000. And so you can get a lump sum of capital. And then what can you do with the capital? Turn around and buy tax liens and let that money just work for you now. I mean, that's, that's right, why I talk about right back. Stay right there. We're going to send you another video. So don't go away, you yeah. guys. Next time I'm going to show you, uh, you're going to be shocked. I'm going to show you how to make guaranteed 20%. Guaranteed 20%. It's going to be the first question Brian's going to ask me. We'll be right back.